Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. If you would stand as able and join me in our call to worship. Let all creation bless the Lord. Let the faithful sing bless the Lord. The Lord lifts up those who fall and provides food for his receipts. The Lord is just and full of compassion. God is near wherever we call. Let us worship the Lord whose kingdom is everlasting. Whose words are faithful and full of grace. Our opening hymn this morning is found in the faith we sing. Number 2165, Cry of My Heart. Thank you. 
scripture reading comes from Luke, the 18th chapter, and I'm sharing verses 1 to 8. Then Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and not give up. He said, in a certain town there was a judge who neither feared God nor cared what people thought. And there was a widow in that town who kept coming to him with the plea, grant me justice against my adversary. For some time he refused, but finally he said to himself, even though I don't fear God or care what people think, Yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will see that she gets justice, so that she won't eventually come and attack me. And the Lord said, Listen to what the unjudged judge says. And will not God bring about justice for the chosen ones who cry out to him day and night? Will he keep putting them off? I tell you, he will see that they get justice, and quickly, However, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? This is the word of God for the people of God. Praise you, God. God. You may be seated. Gracious and holy Lord, we know that Jesus never did anything didn't take a step without lifting prayer to you, seeking your will for his life. Enliven us, Lord God, that we would embrace Jesus' way of praying in our own lives. Open us up to hear what it is you would have us hear through the power of your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. In our concluding message from Paul in our study of Ephesians, we heard him say this, pray on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests, not just for ourselves, but for all the saints who face temptation, oppression, or evil circumstances. If you were to embrace some time for private reflection, how would you describe your prayer life in this season? Is it vibrant? Is it lacking? Is it blazing hot or lukewarm? In a Pew Research study, which was done in 2021, 3,937 people were surveyed about that same questions. Fewer than half, 45% responded that they pray daily, and 32% responded that they seldom or never pray. Maybe if we're honest with ourselves and God, we know that our prayer lives are perhaps could be a little more vibrant. The most basic definition of prayer is talking to God. Through prayer, we invite God into both the situations we encounter and our lives. Prayer changes situations, but even more important, prayer changes us. The Bible is full of robust prayers as we get glimpses of the prayer lives of individuals and communities throughout scripture. Some may be motivated by a need for healing and help, or some may be from people who wanted to express gratitude from a grateful heart. Other prayers focus on describing and thanksgiving, giving to the magnificence of God. Despite the many prayer warriors, we meet in a multitude of stories. I think that the disciples themselves realized that something was lacking in their prayer lives because we remember that they approached Jesus and they said, Lord, teach us to pray. They wanted to pray like Jesus prayed. So over the next few weeks, 
we're going to mimic those words. As we take a deep dive into some of the prayers that are recorded in God's story. This morning we look at the prayers of two women. Hannah was barren, and in the Jewish culture, that was considered a curse. A woman's purpose was to bear children, especially male children. We heard a piece of Hannah's prayer in our Hebrew scripture reading. She was indeed barren. She was married to a man that absolutely loved her. But he also had more than one wife. And the other women would torment her without mercy because of her barrenness. Every year, they would make their trek to the festivals. Hannah would spend time in the temple praying, lifting up her request to God. One year when she was there praying, she made a promise to God that if God were to give her a son, she would devote and dedicate that son to God. Hannah was so deeply troubled that when she prayed, the rabbi of the temple, the priest, she had, he actually thought that she was drunk and admonished her. And Hannah said, no, Eli, I'm just pouring my heart out to God. I'm making my prayer. Anger, resentment, bitterness, those are not good emotions to walk around life with. I suspect that all of us have experienced those emotions to one degree or another in our lives. Sometimes life brings adversities. People will disappoint us. Situations will come up that leads us to be angry, disappointed, maybe even through some bitterness. I think that at one time or another, most of us have experienced one of those things. Hannah, she gives us an example of what we should do. Hannah gave her situation, her disappointment, maybe even her bitterness at being childless, to God. And she did it there in the presence of God, in the holy place, and then she left it there. She left it there saying, let your servant find favor in your eyes. And then Hannah went on her way. She took food, dried her tears. Her face was no longer sad. In our New Testament parable, we meet two characters. The first is a wicked judge who cares about no one but himself. He even realizes that he's a scoundrel because he tells us right up front that he had no fear of God. But he's plucked. He's played by this pesky unnamed widow. And that becomes bothersome to him. She was annoying him to the point that he felt emotionally beat up by her non-stop the second character is the needy widow. In biblical times, widows were especially defenseless. There weren't many vocational opportunities that women could, could participate in. Life insurance, well, that was non-existent. So a widow was dependent on whatever her husband had left her when he died. But now, some crook has cheated her out of that little bit that she had to live on. So she comes to the judge, and she asks the judge for justice. He takes one look at her and thinks to himself, she's not going to give me much of a bribe. I've got many others who will reward me handsomely for being on the side of their case. So he refuses to give her help. 
He tells his bailiff to escort her out of the courtroom, and he thinks, that's the last of her. Well, he was really wrong. He no sooner leaves the courtroom to go home for lunch than this woman's on his heels all the way to his house. When he comes out to go back to work, there she is. When he goes home at night, there she is. Every morning, she's parked at the door of the courthouse, just waiting for him to show up so she can bubble a little more for justice. Every day, he tells her to get lost. But she keeps coming back. He can't get rid of her. So, she's beginning to be this thorn, to dominate his peace of his life. He begins to hate going to work, because he knows that she's going to be right in his face. Finally, after weeks of this going on, he says to himself, even though I don't fear God and I don't care about this woman at all, I'm going to grant her request. I'm going to grant her request just to get her on my back. Jesus says, hear what the unrighteous judge said. There's a lesson to be learned from this situation about persevering in prayer. Sometimes it may feel to us that God is delaying a response to our prayers. But if we believe that God is like this unrighteous judge in any way at all, we would be greatly mistaken. If we thought that Jesus is teaching that God is this self-centered, callous judge, that would run counter to everything that the Bible reveals about the character of God. God is in relationship with us. That's primary. Jesus is using this parable as an example of perseverance. If this widow could get justice from this hardened, crusty, uncaring old judge, doesn't it follow for us? Doesn't it make good sense that our loving, tender, gracious God will hear and answer us when we cry out? It just makes good biblical sense to us. Have you ever experienced having your prayer unanswered and you begin to lose heart? Maybe you even give up. Jesus knew that. And in this parable, and it only happens this once out of two, two times, Jesus tells us the purpose of the parable right up front. That's extraordinary. That should grab our attention. Jesus told this parable to show that people should pray and never give up. Why? Because sometimes we assume that we're strong enough, that we're knowledgeable enough to handle things in our own strength. That's especially dangerous when it involves a task that we do every day over and over and over again. We hop in the car and we head off on a trip without a thought of prayer because we've driven safely for so many years. We forget that we depend on the Lord to protect us. We go to work every day. We do our jobs without prayer because we know how to do our jobs. We forget that we're dependent on God to do our jobs competently. And I think that that even carries over to be true of our discipleship tasks, ones that we do so often that we forget to ask God to lead us in what God would have us do. The church in ways is kind of like this widow who not only lost her husband, but also had to contend with someone who was taking unfair advantage of her. Sometimes the church, us, have gotten the idea, the silly notion, 
that if we follow Jesus, everything in life is going to work out just perfectly. We're all going to have a storybook ending. But scripture shows us some plenty of stories of people who had significant struggles. We need to remember that yes, we're the church, but we're living in a sin sick world. So we shouldn't think that we're not going to run into issues, dilemmas, problems. The widow, she had no attorney. She had no advocate to plead her case. She had no guarantee of getting what she was asking for. But what she did have is the same thing that we have. The Lord's promise that whatever we ask in his name, he will do. Perhaps not in the way that we want, but always in the way of God's will for our lives. Let's go back to Hannah for a minute. She conceived. God answered that prayer. And she had a child, and they named him Samuel. Hannah did dedicate Samuel to God's work. Once he was weaned, she took him to the temple where he lived with Eli. He goes on to be a great prophet in Israel's story. Whether our prayers are answering the way we want or not, I believe that God wants us, like Hannah and the nagging widow, to keep on asking. And while we're waiting on God's timing to answer our prayers, let us show what the love of God looks like. What it looks like to be the church. The church called to love others. To show the love of God to others. Let's pray. Let us pray for ourselves. Let us pray for each other. Let us pray for God's creation. Let us follow the example of Jesus the Christ, who kept the course of obedience to God's will by continually persevering in prayer. Amen? Amen. So the first announcement I have is that the Gay Pride Festival for today has been canceled because of the weather. Um, I do have some prayer concerns and then I'll hear any additional prayer concerns. Shelly is traveling this weekend. She's in Maryland with our friends, so we certainly pray that she has renewal and comes back safely, especially in the weather. Nancy is still in Collingswood, so I ask that you continue to pray for her on healing, pain management, and at this point, a good discharge plan for her as her time at Collinswood draws to a close. Um, Peter, who we know we've been praying about with uh, Teresa's brother with a foot infection, that infection is now in his bone. So um, clearly he needs our, our prayers. And Bart has lifted up the earthquake in Morocco and the number of people that are, have already died in addition to all the other catastrophes that we've seen over the last month with the wildfires and the floods. So, um, continue to hold God's creation, God's people in, in a heart of prayer. Do we have other concerns? Yes. Hold on. I'd like to ask for additional traveling mercies for everyone else who's traveling internationally, and I'd like to ask for traveling mercies for myself and Lou as we travel to Sweden to visit my son and the rest of my father's family. Thank you. Uh, hold on. Oh, you've got a good strong voice. Okay, fine. Uh, so, um, let's next week, if you're a choir member, let's meet after, um, uh, at, what time? 10.45.
1045 uh, in the choir room, and let's plan on getting back together and starting some collaborative music back up, okay? So next week, after service, we will make a joyful noise. We will make a joyful noise. Other prayer concerns? Let's pray. Gracious and holy God, we come humbly before you with thanksgiving on our lips that you indeed hear prayers. Prayers that we shout, prayers that we whisper, that you would want to hear from us. Humbles us. We give thanks that your promise is that you are always near. Help us to embrace the prayer life that Jesus shows us over and over and over again. Help us to seek your will in each phase of our day. Lord, you've heard the pleadings of our hearts. We give thanks to you for the ministry of Shelley. We pray that during her time away that you will just fill her with joy as she visits with loved ones, that you would keep her travel safe as she returns to us. Lord God, I know that you know the challenges that Nancy's facing. We also know that you are as near to her as her words are to you. So we pray that Jesus would touch her. Touch her and heal that pain, that spine. Give wisdom to those people who are helping her to set up plans for the what next. We give thanks, Lord God, for all those that come alongside of her as she journeys back into health and wellness. We pray for Peter, even as his infection has progressed. We know that you are the ultimate healer. So we ask that your will be done in healing him. We pray for Josie and her family as they go to Sweden to see family and friends. Keep them safe, fill them with your joy. Bring them back safe. Let this just be a time when they think of nothing but celebrating your goodness and family. Lord God, we pray for those who are living out in the fields in Morocco because they don't want to be in buildings, at least there's another earthquake. We pray for those who are, are trapped, waiting for someone to recover and rescue them. Give strength, Lord God, to the workers. Give strength to those that are mourning loss of families. Lord God, there's so many events between wildfires and floods and natural disasters. We ask, Lord God, that you would tell us what you would have us do, how to support the people of your world who are going through devastating situations. Lord, teach us to pray as Jesus prayed. Teach us to just rely on you in every situation and to seek your face and do your will. We begin by praying the words that Jesus gave us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us for your prophets. And so with your people on earth, with all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God, power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in your eyes. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in your eyes. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. Your spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captive, and recovering sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. By the baptism of the suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and He gave thanks to you. He broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, broken for you. Likewise, after the dinner, he took the cup and again gave thanks to God the Father. And he passed it around. He said, drink from this, all of you. This is the cup of the new covenant. Do this in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts of Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here, and on these gifts of bread and juice. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ and one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world. And so Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. The table is set. It's not our table. It's the table of Jesus the Christ, who offers us the invitation to come and to be fed, so we can go back out and do what it is that God calls us to do. So come. Come and feast.
Enjoy it more while you're listening. Go ahead and pray through those for you. Can I have this mic off? Gracious and holy God, we give you thanks. We give you thanks for the abundance of the blessings that you pour out into each of our lives. Help us to always live with open hands, lifting up praises to you and receiving what it is you have for us. In all things, may we give thanks to Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 As God gives to us, we return a portion back to God so that the church can continue to be in ministry with the world and invite Warren to be baptized in all things. <laughs>
people and God's world and the situations we encounter this week, just bathed in powerful prayers, raise them to the heavens, and then watch and do, watch and see the mighty things that God's going to do. Go with God, knowing God goes with you. The love that's a bless you. Amen. 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 Amen.